Hello! In the end of my last video I told you that I improved terrain generation performance and I thought I'd demonstrate that real quick. As you can see the terrain in, in front of me loads quite fast and there's always a bunch of chunks loaded in front of me. And yeah it works. Wait what was that? Did you feel that? Let me check out the debug menu. Oh no that was a huge lag spike. And another one. Alright, so what's calling the, these lag spikes is actually Java's garbage collection. When I hit the upper memory link limit, Java desperately tries to free up memory and that can halt the game for quite some time. And if you look closely, there's also a bunch of smaller spikes. A lot of that noise is. Uh, a lot of that noise actually comes from my screen recorder, but there's a bunch of spikes in almost a regular distance that are caused by the garbage collector. And yeah, one one way to solve this would be to just uh, to just increase the upper memory limit. Right now it's 3.5 gigabytes, and I could improve this without a problem. But there's also a second solution, which would be to rewrite Cubus in a language that doesn't have a garbage collector. And if you've watched my other videos, then you probably know what <laughs> what I want to do. Uh, yeah, obviously I'm going to make the rewrite. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, the. Those lag spikes aren't, or the lag spikes right now aren't my only problem with Java. Uh, even before I improved the terrain generation, I was uh, getting quite a few lag spikes. They were they were smaller, obviously, but they were noticeable, and I didn't really like them. And also, um, if I try to produce less garbage, then my code starts looking uglier and uglier and I don't really like that. Huh, that's a nice cave. Um, so yeah, that's why I, why I want to make a rewrite. But first of all, I actually want to show that Java is, is trying to improve things. There is this project Valhalla that basically tries to make uh, types that don't have a pointer that are basically inlined into into the array without having without having all those extra objects lying lying around the memory and the garbage collector would need to take care of all of these individually whereas in the new system you'd have like one big array that can be cleaned at once and that would be a lot better obviously but this project Valhalla is it has actually started in 2014 and there's honestly no end in sight so that wouldn't be a short term solution so what other languages can i use actually one of my big problems with c++ uh, has actually been fixed in c++20 I didn't like all these includes because it kind of forces me to use header files and with header files I basically have to duplicate a lot of stuff between the header files and the implementation files. And yeah, with these modules it is possible to import uh, to import stuff like in every other normal language. Anyways, uh, C++ 20 is, exists for a couple of years now, we are in 2022, so it should be implemented everywhere, right? Wrong. <laughs> it's only partially supported in the most important compilers and while I did manage to get it working with GCC, I didn't get any syntax highlighting and my IDE was constantly showing me errors and that was really annoying to work with, so it's, it might be some time until modules become workable. 
So yeah, C++ is not an option for me then. What about Rust? A lot of people talk about Rust nowadays and it's a pretty interesting concept to have to have all the memory uh, memory errors compile time checked and I did try Rust uh, very briefly though but I tried it and I, to be honest I found it kind of annoying to have this power checker it, it kind of limits design choices in a way like as soon as I want to have pointers everywhere then I'm, I'm getting a problem with lifetimes and having only one mutable reference at a time and all that. And yeah, in my case I'm making a game so I don't really need reliability, it just needs to work good enough. I don't care if in 0.001% of my cases the game crashes or does some weird memory memory stuff and yeah that's why I don't want to use Rust. Um, actually after my after my last rewrite attempt uh, Zenith, the, the original creator of Cubus, showed me a different language. It's uh, a fairly new na language, it's called Zig and what is really interesting about this one and what what has been a big reason why I've been staying with Java for so long, Zig actually supports cross compilation out of the box. So I could go ahead and compile a Windows executable from my Linux machine here and it would work on, on Windows. I can I can test it with Wine and I never need to touch the Windows operating system in the process. That's really cool. I'll also demonstrate that later. So a few other things that are cool about Zig that I wanted to show. Um, first of all is compile time reflection. Essentially um, this is a vector, a vector library that I made and it's normally with generics you have you have all the fields already there so you basically have like like uh, x y and z already defined depending on t and with the zig you can actually create functions that are more general than the, this you can give it a random type and you can you can iterate through all the fields of that type and uh, perform operations on them. Like, for example, here I'm doing an addition on every field of, <laughs> of that type. So this is essentially a generic element or wise addition and it works pretty good. <laughs> So yeah, and essentially I have I have this this function here. I can I can include include this in every in every different type for for two elements, three elements, four elements, and it's working pretty good. Another thing that's really cool about Zig is that it can that it can work with C libraries really easy. This is literally the only thing I have to do to include a, a C header file. It's it's super it's super easy and uh, works out of the box. I did have to do a couple extra things to get uh, header only libraries to work because uh, Zig doesn't like having the implementation in the in the header files. But that was also relatively easy. Uh, essentially, I just made a just made a C file that contains the implementation and added that to my build file, which is also relatively easy. I can just add C source files to my build process, 
who it is. And yeah, that's that's really cool. What's also what's also really nice about Zig is that I can do stuff like um, I can override the log function. For example, here I added uh, color codes to the logging, so I get like color text in my in my command output, and I also output it. I also outputted a, a copy of the the log to a to a log file. This is not really an advantage of Zig, but more an advantage of the the standard library because this is the logger is a standard library function. So yeah, they put a lot of thought into the standard library. So sadly it's not all perfect. But um, before we come to that, let me actually demonstrate how it works. Right now, I'm at, in the rewrite, I'm at a point where I can create a client, connect to a server and render all that stuff. And for the server, I'm actually using the, the Java, the Java version. So I have to invite my, my rewrite here. And yeah, here we go. As you can see, I'm I'm in a world and it's, it's rendering is rendering all the blocks. It's rendering the the other player. And yeah, a lot of a lot of stuff is already done. It's not always working quite right, but um there's still a bunch of missing functionality like breaking blocks and all that and obviously there is no no interface right now so no no uh no menu and all that no inventory um yeah that's the basic thing now uh close this so so far it seems it seems quite Zig seems to be quite good so let me show you one of the bad things so you see this one here this is kind of a weird construct right I'm this here is an array I'm uh, taking the reference of that array and then I'm indexing into that array the same construct is down here also. And what's weird is if I don't take the reference and instead index the array directly, Zig randomly decides to put to put the entire array to, to put a copy of the entire array onto the stack. And yeah, obviously this is a compiler bug, but uh, it's kind of weird that these things happen. Let me let me show you real quick. Uh, I need to invite again. So yeah, um, compiling also takes takes a bunch of time. Oh, what happened here? Ah, it's already working. As you can see, it's loading super slow. I. I changed the loading process basically and as you can see it's <laughs> it's so slow it still has only loaded like a couple of chunks and <laughs> yeah just to just to demonstrate the impact of this issue obviously um, I found this workaround so it's not it's not affecting me th that much right now, but I just wanted to so show that Zig is full of compiler bugs and it can be a bit annoying. So if you are, <laughs> if you don't want to chase compiler bugs all the time, then Zig is probably nothing, mm, not very good for you. But in a couple of years, it might be really interesting. 
So the next next thing I want to show is um, compiling for Windows, which essentially I can give uh, the compile command like this target option, which tells it to compile for for Windows and since I already compiled that earlier, it's still in cache and super fast. And what I can do now is I can take out my my wine, which is like, which is not an emulator for Windows, but it's uh, it allows me to execute uh, Windows executables, like like this one. And as you can see, there's a window. I obviously have to um, open the open the server, and here we go, a working <laughs> a working Windows version of my project, <laughs> and I didn't even have to open Windows for to test it. <laughs> this is so cool. Yeah, that's. That's basically it for today. Um, this has been kind of a different video. I <laughs> kind of tried to um, to make a video without without ha having to edit as much. So I I put all the stuff in manually, like for example the screenshot. <laughs> um, obviously, I need to add uh, music later, but it has been kind of fun to to make a video without while having having everything having to to put everything in <laughs> while while talking usually my my voice was kind of disconnected from the from the video i recorded my voice and like a week later i was i was making the 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 imagery and <laughs> i don't know i think i this kind of created a disconnect between what I said and what was what was actually happening. And yeah, I hope I hope this is this is better. It's obviously a bit a bit weird for me to do something like this. I've never talked to my computer while also doing stuff on it. <laughs> I don't know. Um yeah, I'll see. Tell me, tell me in the comments what you think about this. <laughs> uh, goodbye.